All right, last question. If f of x equals those two logarithms subtracting one another and g of x equals this logarithms, for which values of x does f uh, function f equal function g? How could we solve that? So when you say, put them on top of each other, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to start here. That's what I'm trying to find. What would be the first step? Let's substitute. What's f of x the same thing as? All this log base 3 of x plus 3 minus log 3 x minus 2 equals, and what's g of x? x minus five. Okay, that was just substitution. That's all I did. I'm gonna write my steps to the side. So if you're looking at it later, I substituted. Okay, now what do you think we could do to try to solve this problem? Can I just say, oh, they're all log threes. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Not yet, because it's not one-to-one -one property. We'd have to do a quotient property first. Very good. Is it Arlette that said that? Catch who it was. Quotient. We're going to do the quotient property. So what does the quotient property tell us? If you have two or more logs that have a subtraction involved anywhere, what can I do with those? Make it one logarithm, but we're dividing. Very good. What goes to the numerator? The, whatever originates from a positive logarithm, which in this case is x plus 3. So what about this x minus 2? Since it's originating from a negative log, it goes to the denominator. Okay, from here, what could I do? Yeah, this is the one-to-one -one property. Basically, what you're doing is in this particular problem, we're raising, we're taking like the base, like we're saying there's a base of three, we're raising them. Base three on both sides, if that makes sense. What I'm doing basically on both sides is I'm raising them. I'm taking three and raising it to the power of both sides. That's what I'm doing here. In essence, that's what's happening because that will cancel out the log threes on both sides. But since I didn't teach you that way, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel them like that. And so what are we left with? We're left with X plus three over X minus two equals X minus five. All right, how do we solve from there? Multiply by x minus 2. So I think what Evelyn's getting at is she doesn't like a de denominator. Are you all the same way? You all want to get rid of that division over there? I'm cool with that. Same with me, Ruby. So that will multiply. And so we'll have x plus 3 equals, let's distribute this out. What's x times x? That'll be x squared. What about x times negative 2? Negative 2x. Okay, good. I'll go ahead and just write that. A negative 2x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And then finally, a negative 5 times a negative 2. Positive 10. Okay. Let's combine some like terms and we'll be able to arrive at our solution pretty quickly. Uh, I have multiple powers of X's. We're going to have to factor. So let's get everything together. I can subtract an X on both sides. So I'll subtract an X and I can subtract a three. This simplifies, this simplifies. And so I have zero equals x squared. Okay, let's be careful here. I got a negative 2x, a negative 5x, negative x. How do those combine together? Do we just say three negatives is a negative? Do I say, well, I got negative 2, now negative 5, more or less, you could say, and then another negative? How do we combine those? Why is it negative 8? Okay, so you're already subtracting 2. Now we're subtracting 5 more, which brings us to negative 7. Now I subtract 1 more, which brings us to 
negative eight. And then what about 10 minus three? Positive seven. All right, good. Last step here. How do I solve that? Let's factor. And I like to use X method. So we're going to use factors of A times C that add up to B. All right, what uh, here, what's one times seven? Factors of positive seven that add to B negative eight. Take, let's forget the negatives for a second. What are the only things that can multiply rationals? What are the only rational or uh, integer values that can multiply to give you seven? Seven and one, it's gotta be seven and one. How do I make it be negative eight? Both negatives, two negatives when you multiply, make it positive, two negatives when you subtract, do not cancel, it just becomes more negative, so it's negative eight, that's right. So zero would equal x minus seven and x minus one. We can use our zero product property to arrive at our solutions. The zero product property, let me write that down, this is an Algebra 2 property. If you're like, I don't remember the lesson packet that had that. Well, we've done it since the beginning of the year because this is an Algebra 2 thing. It says if you're multiplying, as we are on the right side, and you have a product of zero, what's the only way in math? Actually, take that back. What's the only way in the world? It's not just in math. It's the only way in the world to multiply and get a product of zero. You got to be multiplying by zero. So what would X equal here to give me zero in this factor? Positive 7. And what about here? Okay, here's what's hard on this unit. You have to remember is not every answer when you solve it algebraically is going to be a good answer. They could be extraneous. Scroll back up. Remember, because a log must be positive. If I plug in a 7, what is 7 plus 3? 10. Good there. What about 7 minus 2? 5. Good there. What about 7 minus 5? 2. We're good there. Those are all positives. Now let's plug in one. What's one plus three? What's one minus two? Oh, we're no good, are we? That's outside the domain. So this is not, this right here is what we call an extraneous answer. Does extraneous answers, are they good or bad? Bad, we do not use them. Extraneous, that is not a good answer there. This is a good answer. So the way it would be written on the test, just so you know, this is almost a reminder to you, is they would say X equals seven only. What that only is telling you, this is a good reminder. What do you think that only means? Because sometimes the answer just says x equals 7. Why on this problem would they say x equals 7 only? It's indicating that mathematically, it looks like there should be another answer, but there's not actually. It's not a true answer. So if you ever see that word only, that should be your hint. Oh, on any problem, if you see the word only on the test, that should be your hint, like, oh, something might have been outside the domain. Let me test my answers real quick. That's your hint for you. So this one would say x equals 7 only. Whereas a different problem, um, I can't remember. Let me just go to something. Do we have any other that were just solved for one number? This one. This answer, this value would not say 10 thirds only. Because do I have any type? Look at what's on the screen. Do you see any word ex uh, extraneous on there? So it would just say 10 thirds. It would not say 10 thirds only. So if you see that word only, that's indicating to you that something may have been uh, extraneous. So check your answers to make sure you eliminate that. All right, that's a wrap for this review.